Occupancy, I'm on page 47, guys. Occupancy of council owned commercial buildings. Yeah. Sorry, no, no, each committee does that. Yeah. So, unless there's something you want to steal from another committee. Okay. Right. Thank you. I building with staff recommendations on page 53. Any questions? Could I introduce John here from Homes Consulting? Yep. Yep. Who's here to uh, answer any questions? And uh, Peter McGibbon from our own capital team, of course, Darren Moses. So this is a piece of work that we've been doing over a lengthy period of time and at Council's request, particularly just before Christmas, we re revisited a, a previous paper that we had presented on this. Uh, and uh, the report uh, is in front of you. Very happy to take questions, and certainly John's able to maybe add a perspective. If, with your permission, would you like to say, give a bit of a background, John? Or um, yes, can do certainly. Um, obviously, this is something that's been looked at before, um, and there've been decisions made in the past. I think it's an important point to, to look at here and see where this is going, uh, looking forward. The um, It'd be fair to say that this has got a fair bit of attention at the moment at government level. Uh, Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, um, Department of Housing that was, is looking very closely at what they're doing with the earthquake prone building section of the Act, um, as you're probably aware. <clears throat> they're also working on where they go next with this question which is raised in here about buildings with specific um, critical vulnerabilities or whatever they may be termed going forward. I think it's quite important here that what you're doing to some extent is anticipating where that's likely to go. So to some extent you're leading the field in that one. So I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's a good move here to be looking at buildings on the basis not of an assessed percent MBS necessarily, but to be concentrating very much on what the factors are of individual buildings which will make them liable to damage, um, and in particular catastrophic collapse, which is really where people's concerns lie. And so if you're um, looking at how best to make use of your facilities, how best to manage risk, necessarily by completely avoiding it and um, evacuating buildings which are um, assessed of having, as having a low percent MBS, which, is, which is, can be misleading. It's really more about saying how do we put in place a long-term management plan to address the risk, mitigate it as necessary and as funds are available to do so, in a, in a fashion which addresses the risk, addresses the need, and looks at your long-term planning. In terms of the policy change, um, how many buildings would you think this would impact on? Have you got any idea of how many buildings we might reopen or um, that we would relook at? We, we did anticipate that question being asked today, and I can't give you a number, but I think um, there will, be up, there will be possibly closed buildings under the current policy which we would be able to reopen if this, poli if this policy is, um, is reviewed and approved today. So that the anticipation was subject to approval today. We do that um, with an update to the next uh, committee or council as to, as to what that produces. This doesn't need to come back again in a month or two just to carry this structure over to this delegation over to the new structure. So those words in caps. With that amendment, Councillor Goff moves and Councillor Quatter seconds. Put, put that. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, carried. Awesome. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. Um, so I now am required to move the clause, which I can't find. <laughs> about going into 